So hello everybody and welcome back. It's Mr. Sanchez here with another lesson for geometry. Today we're going to be doing lesson 11-1 congruent triangles. Um, our learning targets for today are pretty straightforward. It's just the fact that congruent triangles have congruent corresponding parts. We're going to go into detail what these what this means. And it's also to determine the unknown angle measures or side lengths in congruent triangles. All right, so it's all pretty straightforward. Um, I feel like it's 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 easier to show than to explain, so we're gonna jump straight into it. But before we do that, um, I want to tell you guys this. Uh, and there's no uh, congruent triangles or triangles that have the same size and shape. So, you know, that means they're 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 almost identical. You know, it's just they might have different labels. All right, it's like it's like if we had twin brothers, right? Technically, one would be Jose and the other one Juan but they're technically still the same person in a way. Um, anyways, that's the way I thought of it. Think about it like they're twins with different names, right? So we know Pablo can have a left arm and then we have, um, I don't know, Luis with another left arm. You know, if they, if they look almost the exact same and because they are, because they're identical, but you know, they're different people. It'd be like, that's Pablo's left arm and that's Luis's left arm, right? So, all right, we're going to go straight into it. All right, so first of all, we're, it's going to tell us these two things, all right? Um, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So if we follow this orientation, we're saying ABC oh, A, is going to be congruent to DEF. That's the orientation that we're going to be following, okay? That's what we have said, all right? And uh, so what that means is that our line segment AB, when it comes to AB, AB is gonna be the same thing as DE, okay? So these, these these map to each other. And if you remember that from algebra one, that basically means anything that happens to AB is correct, is the, the line segment AB is correctly corresponding to ED, okay? That also means that the mesh, so that means these two are congruent. Okay. It also means that angle A is going to be the same as angle D. That's what it means to be congruent. So whatever happens to angle A, it's going to be the same to angle D. Okay. And then right now, all, all I'm showing you are the parts that correspond to each other. So AB is the same thing as DE. Angle A is the same thing as angle D. All right, the next part we're going to go over would be, I guess, angle B. Uh, we're going to look at BC, right? BC is going to be the same thing as EF, right? Because we're just following this, this, this part. So everything that corresponds with BC, BC is going to correspond to EF. And on that note, we're also going to say that angle E, the measurement of angle E is going to be the same thing as measurement of angle B. And we're showing that they're also congruent. So angle E. And I like drawing my lines through this. Let's just draw lines through this. Our angle E. Okay. And then our final side, right? Our final side is going to be a side AC, right? So one, two, three. It's going to be one, two, three. So AC, whatever, when we're talking about AC, that's the same thing as talking about DF, right? It goes from AC, so it's going to be DF, right? So that's what we don't even know. And lastly, um, if all triangles add up to 180 and if they have two, if um, 180 degrees, and if, so I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. The sum of all angles inside a triangle always add up to 180. So if two if two angles are the same, that means that the third angle has to be the same. Okay, so um, we're gonna have one, two, three here. One, two, three, which basically means angle C is the same as angle F. So right here, these are the corresponding parts, okay? Uh, corresponding parts. Right, and the cool thing about corresponding parts is that they are congruent. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles
are congruent. And all we're saying basically is AB is congruent to ED and then BC is congruent to EF, AC congruent to DF. Angle A is congruent to angle D. And that's the congruent symbol what I'm writing, so write that down. Oops, I drew a line up here. Let's let's take that line out. And uh, angle C. Yeah, so that's all it means. That's all we're saying. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And you're probably wondering, oh man, Mister, that's a lot. Uh, but it really isn't. All we're saying is that um, if you were to rotate this triangle and bring it over here, it would land perfectly on there, and all the parts would match up. Okay, that's all we're saying. And this is something you got to write down. All right, corresponding parts result from a one-to-one -one matching sides and angles from one figure to another. All right, so basically, all we're saying is if we tell you two I two items are congruent then uh, each side matches specifically to one other side. It, um, and each angle is going to correspond to another angle, right? So um, in this case, I've already highlighted one, right? So BC corresponds to EF, right? And I guess uh, AC corresponds to um, DF. And then the angles also have another thing going on there. But um, I just used the tick marks to show congruency, right? So angle A is congruent to angle D, angle B is congruent to angle E, and angle F is congruent to angle C. All right, triangles, and then you also got to remember this. Triangles have three pairs of congruent sides and three pairs of congruent, oh, oh my gosh, this is such a typo. Um, let's just say congruent angles, haha. <laughs> three sides of congruent angles. Three pairs of congruent angles. And now we can highlight the rest. All right. That going forward, make sure, make sure you got to write down all of this, guys, to get full credit. Just remember that. And then we're going to go on to the next slide. And now all we're going to do is use the new knowledge we have to try to try these, right? So we need, in this figure, it tells us triangle RST. So RST is congruent to XYZ. So now we know the orientation sort of, right? So let's start with this. RS is congruent to XY, all right? All right, so we can do that. All right, so that means, and then we're gonna label things, right? Um, we don't have this length yet, but they're congruent. So we're gonna put congruent lines here. And then that means that ST, right, ST is gonna be the same length of ZY. And let's just go ahead and label. This is 15, so ZY is also going to be 15 centimeters. All right. And then we're going to have this last part where um, we say RT is congruent to XZ, right? All right. And I guess since we have um, angle Z, angle Z right, this one is corresponding to the one that's purple and green, right? So that's gonna be this angle right here. So that means measurement of angle T is gonna be 47 degrees, right? All right. And, and it's telling us to find each of the following if possible, All right? So if possible. Measurement of angle X. Well, let's look at angle X. That's where the blue and yellow matches. Do they tell us? Um, all we can say is congruent to measurement of angle R. That's all we can say. It's congruent to measurement of angle R, but the angle is not stated. Okay, so it's not stated. And now it's saying Y, now it's saying for B, it's gonna say YZ, right? So that's, um, that's segment YZ. 
YZ is the pink one, right? And that's 15 centimeters as we, as we wrote. So this is gonna equal to 15 centimeters, but you can also say YZ is congruent to ST. Therefore, YZ is equal to 15 centimeters. But yeah, this would be the answer. This is just the explanation. And now it says find measurement of angle T. Measurement of angle T for the pink and the blue line up, right? So pink and blue. And so these are the corresponding parts, this and this. And so that's gonna be measurement of angle T. That's going to be congruent to measurement of angle Z. So measurement of angle T is equal to 47 degrees. All right, and then there's the last part, it's telling us XZ. Do we know what XZ is? No, we don't, but we know that XZ is congruent to um, RT, right? Um, measure not stated. Measure is not given. So basically we can only find these two, but since they didn't give us the measurements of the other ones, you can't give it. But for the most part, if they if they told us this was 20, then this would be 20. If they said this is 35, then this would be 35, right? All you gotta do is match the corresponding stuff. And I think color coding it, it helps as it visually shows you like, oh, okay, they meet the pink and blue meet here. That means the pink and, and the pink and blue meet here. That means we know that this response to this. You can start looking at it in color coordinates, right? Yellow, pink, yellow, pink. And then blue, yellow, blue, yellow, All right? And that's why we mean by corresponding parts. It's just, you know, match the length. And then if they tell you it's congruent, then, you know, just find the missing pieces. We'll go over more examples in class. Um, but yeah, other than that, guys, have a great day. If you need more, if you have questions, make sure to show up to our Zoom meetings.